count x counts the number of rows in a specified column that have non-blank values. It also assesses a expression across a table. The syntax, we provide the table and then the expression that we'd like to see. This is going to return a integer value for you. Now, the countX function in DAX is, again, kind of like a thoughtful friend or maybe even a referee. It doesn't just count every entry. It evaluates each entry specific to the row and what you've set up. So if we want to see how many times that expression that we've chosen results in a non-blank value. One way to look at it is products in stocks. We could use count to figure out quantity in stock, but we'd get one represented over and over. The count x function in DAX allows us to evaluate the number of rows in a specified column that don't have blank values. We're going to be able to provide a table of which we'd like to iterate across since it's an x function, and then we're going to evaluate an expression across that table. Now, the count x function is kind of like a referee, right? If we counted up every single penalty in a game, it could be pretty tough. A referee has to look at each penalty, see it in the context of the situation, what yard it's happening at, what part of the field, all these different situations, and then produce the number. One way to think about this is a calculation of the sales that had accrued that were over $10,000. I could say something like count X on the sales table with an if statement. And I could say if, which is a logical test, if the sales amount is over $10,000, go ahead and give me the count there. So instead of 1,000 sales, generally, maybe I only had about 250 that were above 10,000. Let's build it together. All right, so for this, I've already got the count of customers hanging out there. And what I'd like to try out is a little, little bit more of a use case for CountX, where we're going to find the high value customers. I'm going to go to the measures table, right click, and go to new measure. Then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I know that this is CountX. I don't want to lose it there, so I'll put CountX. And I'm going to call this my high value customers. Right, I want to assess customers that have sales that are over a higher amount. So I'm going to go ahead and use count X, which will get, again, it's trying to find me the number of those customers. What is the table I'm looking at? I'm looking at dim customer. And across that, I want to assess each customer in regards to their sales amount. That's going to be pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do is bring in an if statement here, which is a logical test. And I'm going to test that if the sum total sales, one of the measures we made earlier in class, if that is above 5000 so if they have spent over $5,000 with us, we would like to figure out the count. Let's give this a shot. Let's iterate across here. Now that count is another one we saw earlier in our class. So we're assessing across the dim customer table, hey, do we actually get above 5,000? If so, we can count them. That's what we're going across the dim customer table. I'll hit enter here, and then let's bring in the high value customer count. All right. So if we go back to count, we had about 18,000 customers. But according to the amount spent, we have about 1,700 plus here that are high value. If I go ahead and bring this in, this awesome new high value measure, right into our table, we can assess 
How many of customers do we have? How many are high value? Be pretty awesome to get a percent out of this and figure out the percent of those high value as a total amount. That would be a great way to assess, do we have people that are spending more in certain areas? I love it.